Hello everybody and thank you so much for tuning in to my next personal brand mechanics interview. My name is Peter Sterlacci. I'm the founder of Believe Become Be Your Brand where I work with on-the-move careerists to help them to shift gears, get out of the saddle and sprint to career success. And I do this by combining my passion and love for cycling with also my, my experience in personal branding. And so that was really my motivation for wanting to start this interview series because I've met some pretty fascinating people who I like to call mechanics of personal branding. In other words, they have a, a toolbox of tools and techniques to help any one of us to maintain, build, and even repair our personal brands. And so my mechanic today is Donna Sardula, and Donna has probably, I would say, like a, a toolbox filled with tools <laughs> that she's going to share with us today. And so, Donna, thanks so much for, for being part of my interview series. Oh, thank you so much. I'm, I'm honored to be here. Thank you. Well, let's jump right into my first question, uh, Donna. And, you know, when I was looking at your website, the first sentence in your bio says that, that you love, in capital letters, big letters, you love LinkedIn. And uh, tell us why you have this passion for LinkedIn and how your relationship started. Sure. I um, I signed up for LinkedIn back in 2005, which in the technology world seems like you know a lifetime ago, and it really it is a lifetime ago. Mm. Um, but I, I joined it, and I remember the very first thing I did, which is probably the same thing everyone does, is I opened up that profile, I opened up my resume, and I just started copying and pasting right. the fields in, and I thought, wow, great job. This is fantastic. And of course, you know, I really didn't get much value mm. from it in those early days. Um, but it was in 2006 that I, I, I started my own territory in Philadelphia. I was selling uh, software to architects and engineers. And I realized that I, I needed some different way beyond the cold call to reach my clients. Right. And I remembered LinkedIn. And I thought, well, maybe, you know, we'll see. And I, I started using it. And lo and behold, I grew my territory. Hmm. I forged really strong relationships. And it really helped me hmm. become a leader in that industry. Wow. And because of that, and my, because of that, knowing how LinkedIn helped me, how, how could I not love it? Right, right. Yeah, well, it's like it's... Um I'm finding now that more and more people who really begin to understand how powerful LinkedIn is, they begin to maybe fall in love with it as well, <laughs> right? And I, well, you know what I always say is, as soon as you start to see opportunities, that's when you go, wait, maybe I should be spending a little yeah. bit more time with this. But unfortunately, it does take time to get that type of, those things to start to develop. Right. So it, there's a bit of a catch-22 there. Exactly. Well, you know, I mean, I really like um, how you use the word makeover in your, the title of your book, uh, your, your book, uh, LinkedIn Makeover, Professional Secrets to a Powerful LinkedIn Profile, um, which I've read. And for those people who are watching this, I highly recommend you, you, you get a copy for yourself. But is there a reason or a story behind why you decided to use the word makeover? Oh, well, you know, I, I had been optimizing profiles well before I, I even attempted the book, mm. before I even started my website, linkedin-makeover.com. And the one thing that people would say to me was, oh my God, this is, this is such a transformation. I feel like I went through you know, a makeover. Oh, okay. And in, in fact, you know, when, I, when I would hear that, you, you would get this sort of visual, this visual of you know, a plain Jane who suddenly comes out of their shell and emerges <laughs> this like, you know, powerful executive. And so with that in my mind, when it was time for me to you know, launch my website, mm. I thought, well, what, what am I going to call myself? Mm. And LinkedIn facelift seemed a little clinical, so I went with LinkedIn makeover. <laughs> that LinkedIn, LinkedIn Botox, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's really cool. And you know, I think in your book uh, and on your site, um, you have so many incredible LinkedIn tips um, and strategies. Um, but if you had to pick your top three tips, uh, mm. what would they be? And can you share the, those with us? Sure. Well, my, my one, my, my favorite tip, the tip that I really think is the most powerful is the, the realization of the importance of keywords, mm. all right? Because what's going on is when you, LinkedIn is, a, is really a search engine right. and people are querying it. They want to find someone like you. There are tons of opportunities out there. You just have to make yourself easy to find. Mm. But the thing is, most people don't know you exist. They don't know your name. Right. So what you want to do is you want to get into their minds and you need to figure out how are they trying to find someone like you. Mm. 
keywords. Mm. Once you realize what those keywords are, you have to you have to pepper them throughout your profile. Right. And in that manner, that's when you're going to pop up in the search results. Got so it. that's yeah. that's my number one excellent tip. Um, my other tip would be uh, grow your network. Really grow it. Don't be shy. Go out there. Make your offline network match mm. your online network. Very good, yeah. um, when you do that, again, it's it's going to open you to so many more opportunities than you'll you'll really ever realize. Sure. Um, it's just so important. And um, my third tip is one that you and I have talked about. It's probably the one, my most popular tip. Everyone just loves this. And it's the symbols. The it's, symbols. you know, don't be afra afraid to, you know, go a little glam on your profile. <laughs> you know, find those little symbols. And you can find them in your character map in Windows. Right. Or you can, you can find them. I, someone just recently told me about Twitter Keys, which is a yes. great app that you can load. Yes. And just copy and paste them. Pepper up your profile. Make mm. it look pretty. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, that, that to me, you know, there's, as I said, there's so many wonderful things that you share in your book and on, on your site. But when I added the, um, the symbols to, to my profile, I absolutely love it. And, and to me, it's like, as you said, imagine you've got the right keywords for people to find you. And then you, if someone searches through those keywords and then your profile comes up, but you also have the symbols there. And it's a mm -hmm. natural reaction for our eyes to gravitate towards that. And so, and you know, I even did that as a sample recently when I was working with some folks on their uh, on a LinkedIn workshop, and I showed them. I, we did a search, and my mind came up, and and you gravitate right towards the profile that has the star on it because I use a star yeah. symbol, and and boom, and people want to click on it. And so I think it's a wonderful. It's such a, you know, it's 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 not. It's such a basic thing, but yet it, it is so powerful. I mean, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's visually attractive and people feel compelled. They, they, and it looks different. It right. really sets your profile aside. It, it's, it makes you stand out from the crowd. And that's what we want. It's, it's ugly out there. There's a lot of people right. vying Absolutely. for positions, vying for opportunities. And whatever you can do to really make yourself stand out, mm. that's going to put you out in front. That's awesome. Now, in all of your experience with working with people, um, and I'm sure you must have worked with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds by now, but can you share a success story of, of somebody uh, you know, who had some opportunities open up for them after going through your makeover? Yeah, I, you know, I, was, I'm, I think of the success stories, and I think my favorite ones are the ones where while we're engaged, m myself and, and the client, there's this epiphany that occurs. Mm. And it, just today, I was working with a woman, and you know, she, she was at first afraid to engage with me because she thought I only worked with executives, and I do work with executives, but I work with people from all ends of the spectrum. Right. It, it does not matter. And you know, she was saying to me, you know, I, I want you know, I'm looking for my next job opportunity. Right. I want to be an executive assistant. But the more we talked, the more I realized she didn't want to be an executive assistant. Mm. She loved marketing and she loved project management. And the more we talked and the more she was able to bounce these ideas off of someone, sure. we began to realize her entire profile was going to change. It, we weren't going to align her mm. with that same old thing she's been doing for years. Right. And you know, once she saw that profile, she said, oh, my God, I feel I, I feel different. I feel better. I, I, I actually feel proud of myself. Mm. And that to me is is I love when that occurs. But, yeah. you know, it, it's it it always goes with it's uh, it's salespeople right. who get the job because they're finally now marketing themselves. Sure. And people believe that now, oh, OK, if he can sell himself, he can sell my product or right, service. Right, Same right. thing with marketing. There's the executives who get the financing. It's the startups that get that, um, the investors. It just it just keeps going and going and going. And it's all about how you mm. align yourself, how you portray yourself. Right, right. And, you know, and, and, and I think, you know, as you mentioned before, that as important as the LinkedIn, your LinkedIn presence is to always kind of align that with your offline presence as well. You know, oh, yeah. I think that's what happens. A lot of people get so focused on, you know, the online, the social media, and we begin to forget that, at least even for me in my field of personal branding, personal branding involves the person. <laughs> And, and we need to be able to, to, to make those connections um, in person as well. I've, I've said to people, LinkedIn can definitely get your foot in the door, but it's really your professional personal presence that's really going to you know, seal the deal, so to speak. So. Oh, 
Absolutely. I mean, you really hit the nail on the head. I, one of the things I say to my clients all the time is, look, with LinkedIn, we're going to write it in a manner that's impressive, that's engaging, that's right. compelling, that's going to convert that reader to someone who wants to talk to you. But it's still up to you right. to talk to them and sell them you. Exactly. And for me, what I've, I've said it before, and I really believe it, it's so true, is that success on LinkedIn is getting off LinkedIn mm. because real world relationships are forged in the real world. That's, right. That's wonderful. I love that. I love that. Now, as you know, uh, I consider you a mechanic of personal branding. And, uh, you know, as I said in, in the beginning of this uh, uh, interview, that someone who has tools and techniques to really help us to maintain, build, and even repair personal brands. And as an avid cyclist, I'm going to use a cycling image here. So I want you to imagine that someone's personal brand has a flat tire. Uh, okay. <laughs> and what advice would you give to help this person to pump up their tire so that their brand is ready to ride again? Okay. Well, I think the, the, it, at least how it relates to LinkedIn, um, what I would suggest that they do is rather than dive in and start trying to repair that tire, mm. they've got to first step back and they need to say, you know, what am I trying to get out of LinkedIn? What is my goal? You know, am I doing this because I want a job? Am I doing this because I want to promote myself? Right. Am I doing this because I'm looking uh, to further my reputation? What, what You have to determine what your goal is. Then once you understand what your goal is, you then need to think, well, who am I targeting? Who is this audience? Mm -hmm. So you need to really do some deep strategic thinking. Right. But once you figure out what you're trying to accomplish for your target audiences. From there, you can determine what your keywords are. Right. Then you can start writing, and you're going to be writing in a manner that's much more focused, and it's, it's really going to lead you down the path where you're going to accomplish what your goals are. Awesome, yeah. So that, that would be my, <laughs> at least my, my first push with that bicyclist. Wonderful, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, excellent. Well, um, I, I want to you know, uh, ask you, if people want to get in touch with you, where, where is the best place that they can find you or you know, can they connect with you uh, on LinkedIn? <laughs> LinkedIn is a good place. Right. Um, and, and I am an open networker, so feel free to send me an invite. I love to connect. I connect with everyone and anyone, and I'll even connect with your brother. <laughs> <laughs> um, but really, the, probably the best place to reach me is my website, which is linkedin makeover dot com. Right. It's there where you can find my book, but it's also there where you can learn about my services. Right. Um, because it's it's I realize it's hard to write about yourself, mm -hmm. and so I my I am available along with my writers to help you craft a really strong presence on LinkedIn. Awesome, awesome, and and also your blog. I mean, I think you know you you blog quite a bit, and uh, you know your blog posts I think are 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 so practical. I mean, it's it's almost like. I find that I can walk away with literally something from every one of your blog posts that I can immediately use. And to me, that, you know, that's, that's the sign of a, of a, of, of a blog that really um, helps people in, in so many ways. So, so uh, I definitely recommend for people watching this to definitely check out um, uh, Donna's blog as well. And, and so now, uh, anything coming up in the near future that you'd like to share with us? Well, I, I do have the good news to let you know that um, my second edition is going to be uh, published in October. So awesome. keep an eye out for it. It'll be available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. And cool. you can also download it on my website as well. So keep your eyes open for October, the second edition of LinkedIn Makeover, Professional Secrets to a Powerful LinkedIn Profile. Awesome. Yes. Well, I'm looking forward to getting my copy and, and everybody else. Make sure you pick up this copy and definitely <laughs> connect with Donna. Um, and thank you so much for, uh, for sharing uh, so many wonderful uh, tips today. And, um, and thank you, everyone, for, for watching. Uh, if, you have, um, if this is your first time watching one of my interviews, and if you're on my site, you can uh, see the other interviews. If you're on uh, YouTube and watching this, just look over to the side there. You'll see a bunch of other uh, personal brand mechanics uh, who, who I've interviewed. And, um, and uh, I've, I really have learned so much. So thank you, Donna. And let's stay connected on both LinkedIn. And someday, maybe we'll meet in person. I hope so. <laughs> I hope it's in Japan because I'd love to visit you there. Yes, yes. Well, maybe we can, if you ever come out to, 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 to the Far East, we'll set up a workshop for you to work with people on LinkedIn in Japan. Deal. <laughs> so thank you so much and uh, best of luck to you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.